Hi kids, it's Smart Todd here. <laughs> Glasses do not make you smart. I just want to point that out right now. I have one because I slept with my contacts in last night. It's an accident. It happens every now and then. I am going to put them back in. Today we're going to take uh, my dad, his uh, exhaust manifold cracked on his Honda. He bought another manifold. They have the cat in it. Um, and that one also cracked and he had the one welded and put back on, but he said, I'm just going to junk this one. So I have his Honda cat here and then I have the cat off that cobalt. And we're going to go see how much money we can get out of both of those. Um, I know I'll get more money out of those than I did the Lexus one. The Lexus cat had what they consider a foil cat. And it is a it's like a foil that is wrapped in a circle. They are not worth as much as the honeycomb style ones, which are more of the um, just square holes. You, you have to see the inside of them to understand. But both of these are that style, and they bring more money. And supposedly this cobalt cat is worth its weight in gold because... When I tried to sell the car whole, all, all everybody wanted was to buy the cat off of it. Now that I'm parting it out, that is the only thing that people want is the cat. And I'm like, no. It even says in my ad, the cat is not for sale. But that doesn't stop him. And I, one guy, I told him no. And he said, I will straight pipe your car. No, you won't because I'm not selling you the cat. So I'm going to take that. And this guy goes by book values, not by uh, weight that's what some places do. They go by weight. You will get more money if they go by book value. So the Honda Cat actually has a part number on it. He can look that up. The Cobalt one, he can go by the book. What the Cobalt, it's a stock Cobalt one. I don't see any numbers on it, but it should bring some decent money. And then after that, we are going to take our winnings to Harbor Freight and get some, <laughs> some tools. I broke my plastic welder last night. I also cracked the Malibu bumper where I replaced where I repaired it. I'm gonna try to repair it one more time. If it does not hold, I'm just gonna buy another bumper. And I went to take it off the car, it cracked, which that's when you had the most stress on it. This time, when I repair it, I'm gonna melt staples into the bumper. So it should bond and there should be a good strong mechanical hold there, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> this dip up it's very dirty at the moment right there it doesn't look too bad but uh, the gas tank overflowed when I was filling it I tried dabbing it and all it did was mess the dip up um, to preserve this what I'm gonna do I ordered clear vinyl and I'm gonna do clear vinyl um, across here and down on both sides of that now hopefully it'll protect that but yeah it started eating it pretty much instantly i dabbed it and it was coming off so i just stopped and i was just you know i i left it the way it was drove home and it doesn't look too horrible but it did leave a little bit of a stain which sucks <laughs> This is the one off the cobalt. That's what I said by honeycomb. You can see in there. And uh, I, I believe my dad's is the same way. Yes, it is. If you can really get in there on that. Anyways, this must be common on these Hondas. Right there. I think this is the aftermarket one he bought. He put the Honda one back on. They both cracked right there in the same exact spot. So, anyways, he had his fixed. We'll see what he gets for that. Like I said, there's a part number stamped on it right here. So, yeah, let's go see what kind of money we can get. Let's see what kind of Harbor Freight goodies we can get.
that was a nice payday right there for that that uh cat the civic cat that was an aftermarket one that my dad bought since that was the aftermarket one it didn't bring much anything it was 20 bucks uh because it was aftermarket now, i asked him i said if it was the original cat how much would it be and it was the same it was 225 dollars just like the cobalt so now i have 225 dollars to go play it at harbor freight <laughs> The wife has kindly just notified me that I do not have $225 to spend in here, but she's also not here. <laughs> well, I spent a little bit more than I thought I was going to. I didn't spend it all. $176 of it though. guy was just doing his job he did do me a favor he's getting paid to do his job and there are laws and I did not follow the laws so obviously you know he could have been nicer about it but I also could have been going to speed line so that's the way it is suck it up buttercup move on all right I licked my wounds it's time to get back down to business I took my free cabinet that I got that I was making into a paint table I decided I wanted to make it mobile so I put four wheels underneath it, two pivoting wheels on this side, and then two straight ones on that side. And I put them facing this way. Because if you put them this way, then whenever you're working on it, if you push on the table, it's going to want to go that way. So if you have it this way, it doesn't go anywhere. Wheel's pretty easy. I got some crud on the floor, but still. Um, this is all my paint for the uh malibu plus i got extra clear back there and extra reducer and stuff um filters and i got another one of these nicer guns today i'm kind of like i wish i wouldn't have bought now but still anyways <laughs> i got it and i got a different regulator for it I'm probably gonna throw it in the trash i could not get this thing to regulate right these ones right here work really really good so i stole that off of my touch-up gun on there and it seems like the pressures are uh regulating pretty good the way i want them this one i'm just gonna throw in here for now i don't know i can't can't seem to get that one to work right even though i just bought it 
but yeah so my other guns in the basement cleaned i got some cleaning spray and stuff let's go over the bumper that i cracked again as you can see right here's my repair as you can see right there is the crack so i got another plastic welder the tip on my other one broke let me find my staple gun and i'm gonna go to town so here's my brand new plastic welder i was gonna go for one of the more expensive ones but you know what these work good for what they are uh this one my tip broke so I modified it. First I messed that hole up. That was the original hole and the, the bolt wasn't, it broke off. So I drilled a bigger hole and uh, I tapped it and put a bigger bolt in, cut off the end of a screwdriver that I'm using as a, a stir stick right now or a mixer for paint, chopped the end off and then I also uh, notched it so that that screw will go in and it goes in tight. And I plugged it in and tested it and it works so I'm gonna use this first and uh, put some notches across here and then I'm gonna use my staple gun put some staples in it in multiple places and then I'm gonna use the other uh, plastic welder to seal this all up then Still on the fence with this decision spending all that time on this uh, it fits not the best but it fits and uh, it's like tight over here Just, I'm gonna have to add some stuff up here and with it flex like that this one staple is starting to stick out a little bit as you can see there so I can heat that up and push it back down in None of the other ones are showing through, but I can kind of see the lines where they're at. So it, I'm, I'm, I'm iffy on this repair, but uh, yeah, I guess I'll get the iron out and mess with that just a little bit more. I used the plastic sticks that come with the plastic welder and added a little bit more material on there. Normally, I would tell you to use bumper material or whatever bumper you are using if you have a piece of it use that to add into it i should i think i'm going to go ahead and add some up here too we're just going to see how it works out because when i sand it i feel like it's going to separate being a different kind of plastic but we'll see what happens um but it covered up those staples a lot better i added material on there the game plan right now is not to paint the whole bumper um i should have showed you my fix on the front up there how it was split at the center i put a metal plate on the back side with uh bead nuts that were on the cobalt and i don't know if you can see it from there but two bolts right up through into that plate i put that plate on there before i plastic welded that so it's going to hold that together so i'm not worried about that coming apart but this part right here hopefully those staples hold up um Game plan for the bumper is not to paint the entire bumper. I'm going to try a little bit of fading and see how it works out. But we're going to be painting the fender. And I'm going to try to fade it across this line right here. And then I'm going to run it. I'm going to paint the whole bottom of the bumper since it's pretty scuffed up across the bottom. Um, but there's a good line to go off of on that too. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to mask it off right there. What I'm going to do, I'll mask it off back past it. And I'm just going to try to stay away from that part. Um, I'm going to just kind of graze the edges here. This, this paint over here is actually really good. But we're going to paint this section of it. The fender, the door, we're going to get some touch up on. Right along there. On the edge. 
we're not this is not going to be a perfect car it's going to have some damage on it still after it's done so that's why i'm not going all out on it this bumper's got a little bit of a you know fender bender to the plastic right there and the under valence is kind of falling off so i do need to get this off also they spray painted it over there in that corner and we are going to be painting that side of the bumper so i might go over part of that but yeah they spray painted it and did not mask off down below as you can see it's white <laughs> so it is what it is but i'm heading in for the night tomorrow i'm gonna move the z out i might take it around the block after my incident yesterday i really shouldn't even be doing this but i'm gonna chance this we're gonna go through mexico i just want to go around the block of mexico and uh, make sure everything's good i'm just gonna toss the bumper to the side uh we're gonna zip tie some stuff up so i don't have to worry about ripping it off and uh we're just gonna we're just gonna go around the mexico block now when i tell you this is gonna be a short drive this is gonna be an extremely short drive it's just gonna be a short clip mexico around the block back yeah <laughs> Obviously, we have our, our tire pressure light on because I didn't mess with that since I put these tires on. We have an airbag light because of our airbags, and I don't know what the other warning is, but we're just going to go. We're going to roll with it. Mexico, here we come. It drives straight. How is this possible? How is this freaking possible? It runs good too. Boy, that's quick. All right, so it runs and drives really good. Backup camera works. Um, yeah, <laughs> got some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, pretty pretty happy with it. Now I'm gonna get the Malibu moved over. Now, on startup, I noticed this thing had an exhaust leak when I first got it. I just noticed it again. Um, I'm fairly certain I know what it is. This small piece of flex pipe right here, thankfully, is a bolt-in piece. But notice how dark it is right around this area. I'm pretty sure that's leaking. So, I'm going to get up in the car and start it. And uh, we're going to see if that's what's leaking. I am wrong and this could be a costly uh, item. <laughs> it sounds like it's coming from the manifold. Uh, thankfully, I do not see any cracks from here, but I also do not see the leak from here. <laughs> we do in fact have a cracked manifold. I found it, you get your hand up in there, I could feel it. Um, I'm gonna get my scope out and I'll show it to you. It is on the cat side of it, like the far end of it. It's shooting back towards the engine. I can feel it. So let me let me see. Right there it is. You can see it right there. Plain as can be. Thankfully the cat is not part of the manifold, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna be expensive. So, I definitely have to get that fixed, because it won't pass inspection like that. And, uh, I don't know 
if going to the salvage yard is going to be a good bet, but I guess <laughs> I'll have to price them. If they're not that bad, I guess we'll just throw one on it, but that's definitely right there is the why. Yeah. So, yes, that sucks. Sometimes new parts are not that bad. So, uh, saving me a trip to the salvage yard to pull another one and all that stuff. Brand new one, dormant one with all the gaskets was $61. And then after shipping and taxes and stuff, it was $76. So, that's not too hateful to fix the one of the only mechanical problems we had. The other one is a wheel sensor. I also ordered a wheel hub. The, the sensor is part of the wheel bearing hub on this. It was like 20 some dollars plus shipping and everything and it came out to 40. Shipping was more on the wheel hub than it was for the exhaust manifold. Don't really get that, but $40 for that and then 70 some for that. So a little over $100 we're gonna have everything mechanically fixed on this thing. Then uh, next video, I'm gonna start on this quarter panel. I need to start working. I need to rip the back bumper off so because we need to fix some stuff on that. Try to strip the uh, spray paint off that bottom valence on the back. And uh, also try to put it back in place. It's kind of not sitting on there right. Here, I'll show it to you. Okay, I see why it's not sitting on there right now. Look at this. It's nice. I didn't even see that. There's not really much I can do with this being plastic. It is a separate piece. Yes. I might go get another one of those. I think in, if I go to the salvage yard and get a nicer one, it might help with this a little bit. I'm going to have to strip that off to paint the bumper anyways. And, yeah, bumper's cracked right there. We're going to fix that. I don't think I'll have an issue with that re-cracking just because it's not, like, on a stress point. That's just kind of like a, you know, whatever. But we'll get that back together. Definitely spray paint over top of the original paint. As you can see, a single stage. So we might have to repaint this whole freaking bumper. I'm thinking we might. Nice. So if you like this episode, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get notifications. Hit that dislike button if you've never driven to Mexico. See you on the next episode of All Right. And it's about two hours before your din din time that you become a big old jerk. Why? Get. Come on. Why are you following me? You jerk. Hey! Um, You're no better! Yeah.